Welcome back everybody. So today we're going to be doing uh, Noob Makes uh, Free CAD applications. Uh, I'm a noob at CAD software, Free CAD in general, but if I can make stuff in Free CAD, um, then pretty much anybody can for sure. Um, so for today, um, I'm going to be actually, this is going to be like a free CAD slash 3D print tutorial because we're going to be doing like a CAD project and then like putting that to 3D print. Um, this is just something I've been working on and CAD's just been something I've been kind of learning myself. Um, but for this particular project I got, um, it's for a clutch um, pneumatic air ratchet. Um, so this like white plastic piece on the end of this air ratchets, like this particular model, like they go bad over time. And so you either buy the replacement part, which oddly enough is very difficult to find, or, you know, CAD software, 3D printer, you build it yourself. Um, and this is just like a very simple mock-up, um, and like whenever you're doing a project like this, you'll probably go through several uh, mock-ups and prototypes before you get to the actual um, like genuine one that you're going to use to replace this with. Um, and this prototype right here, so give a little background explanation, like this white piece is the exhaust port. So that's where your air is going to be like all your air is going to be uh, once used and the tool is going to be running out. Like all air tools have exhaust, like breather ports for air to run out once it's, you know, finished using the power in the in the tool itself. Um, so it has a very kind of interesting star design. It's kind of above my skill level, but uh, it just fits here very tightly into the back of the uh, air ratchet. So the designs I've come up with on the left uh, involve O-rings, which O-rings are pretty easy to get, pretty easy to buy to, uh, for security. Um, and then, well, seal more than just like keeping it in place. Um, and then, of course, um, your breather actually having room to breathe out. And so I've actually tried this, printed this, and tested this. It does work, but I think I can come up with a slightly better design in my prototyping. And so uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. Transition. All right, so before we start up uh, FreeCAD, and before we start up actually making a part, it's important to like understand, um, like have a sketch of what we're actually going to be trying to accomplish in the first place. So this is a very crude, not dimensionally accurate, not to scale sketch um, for what we're trying to uh, create, but all the measurements um, are going to be taken uh, from the actual thing. Whatever you're trying to make, you want to make sure that you get all your measurements in place. Um, the best way to do this for like small scale stuff especially if we're talking like 3D printing this um, and small scale is to like get an actual caliper um, not using a ruler um, they do make metric rulers um, in millimeters but I would recommend caliper so you get like the most dimensionally accurate and then you would actually put it to sketch and um, start you know like with this it can be very rough there's a better way to do this but this is a very quick a uh, rough sketch to get an idea of what we're working with um, before we actually go uh, what we'll be working off of before we actually go to uh, draw this up in CAD. Now as we move over to CAD here you'll see that um, this is of course free CAD again um, we have the startup screen we have uh, create new under documents you can create a new um, sketch and then part, build that from part uh, to go ahead and we'll just go ahead and show you like what we actually like a prototype that I was actually working on for this project. 
Um, and again, I'm basically going to be rebuilding this uh, from scratch with a few modifications. Um, but you can see where you know you have the exhaust um, uh, ports for air. I have a, a small area for my O-ring, uh, which I was putting in. And yeah, that's pretty much about it uh, for this. We're not actually going to be uh, using this uh, for today. We're going to be uh, making a new part altogether. Okay, what else do you need to say about this? Um, so with stuff like this, when we're definitely 3D printing, uh, you want to definitely make sure that you kind of take it into account just how fine detail you can. Um, this is a pretty small part. Um, in total, it's only like 20, 23 inches, um, 23 inches, or in metric, 23 uh, millimeters. So we're not talking about a very large part here at all. Um, so you want to definitely take that account if you're making a new project, uh, whatever you're making. Um, make sure that you have like the correct nozzle on your 3D printer for like finer detail, and you got to be careful not to make too fine detail um, because it may not be able to even capture that. So we went ahead and started a new so project um, gives you the start screen you'll have this pull out window where you can go to a sketcher it gives like a bunch of other pull out windows parts design and a bunch of other stuff we're not going to use here uh, so we're just mainly going to be using sketcher and then part design for this tutorial so you're going to have this uh, create a sketch button here and the create a sketch button is going to pop up an orientation to start your sketch with. Uh, for this, we're going to be using XY plane. Um, like here, we got top down view XY plane. And you could start uh, sketching anywhere on this plane. Me personally, I like to keep things as close and dimensionally accurate as possible with um, little deviations as possible off this. You'll see what I mean. Uh, like for here, we're going to be starting, we're going to go ahead and create a circle. And I'm just going to start this circle, uh, create that in like absolute zero on this plane, um, just to keep everything um, kind of sensical. All right, so with this, this is, um, if you saw at the sketch we had earlier, this is a 30, cent, uh, 30 millimeter part. So we're going to just need to go to uh, 15. It's going to be our radius. When you're creating a circle, um, it's going to create that in um, radius, not diameter. So be aware of that. You can always change it. Um, and modify uh, the constraint. So you can always, um, once we've created, you can always go and modify uh, the constraints of this um, over here in your constraints. Um, this one would be constraint arc or circle, and we'll see that its radius is 15 millimeters, so that's going to make 30 millimeter uh, part that we need. I'll just say OK to that. All right, so we'll go ahead and close out of this. Now that we have this sketch, we're going to go to Part Design. So now that we have this sketch, we're going to go ahead and pad that. All right, so then when we press that pad, let's go ahead and cancel out of that um, with the sketch selected. Hit the pad button. And now here we can actually begin building our part. Uh, so for starts, we're going to start with one millimeter. So it's going to be a very thin part. And this is going to be a very difficult thing 
and 3D print. And we'll see how it turns out. Um, so now that we've got that, we're going to go ahead and click on the face. And we're going to create a sketch again on the face. Again, we're going to be using the circle tool. We're going to be going 0, 0. Alright, so now that we got our measurements uh, for this particular part, uh, this is where our O-ring is going to sit. So this is going to be 11.5. This is going to be our radius. Just like that again, we can, you know, modify that whoops hold up you can modify that make sure we're dimensionally accurate I'll go ahead and cancel out that we're fine all right so we go back to part design close out of that again uh, you can hit pad up here it has sketch tools here you can hit pad down here and this is going to be for the o-ring and it is 3.5 millimeters just like that all right so again we're going to be going to the face going to be creating a sketch on this face again we're taking the circle object or circle make a circle whatever you want to call it going zero zero and then this is going to be 15. We'll close out of that. Rinse and repeat pad. This is going to be, hold on, I need to look at my notes. 5.5 millimeters. Again, it's uh, why well, it's pretty important to keep notes because even I don't have this memorized in my head. All right, so again, we're going to create a sketch on this surface. And this is going to be 28 millimeters. We're looking for 14. Fourteen is our radius. Alright, we can go ahead and close out of that. Pad this. And this is going to be that last length uh, for our part, and that is 13. 0.4 millimeters and that's it that is our part now we're going to need to then bore some holes in this guy um, you can start from top or bottom it doesn't really matter on this sketch um, I may start from the bottom all right, so we're going to create a sketch on the bottom. And again, we're going to need this guy. Create a circle. Zero it out. This is going to be 16.2 diameter. So that is going to be 8.1. Hold up. Yeah, 8.1. is our radius all right and we 
we can go ahead and close out of that. And this we're going to hit the pocket tool. Uh, hole will actually create a hole. Um, uh, an actual like, how do I describe this? Like a, a drill hole. Um, it's not going to create a, the hole that we need for this. If we're just cutting through, we're actually going to need to use uh, the pocket tool just like that. And this is 10 millimeters. I need a 10 millimeter long pocket. All right. And we do the same thing on the top side. Create a sketch. All right. And this is going to be 16.6, .6, so that would be 18, 8.3, 18, jeez, 8.3. Be 8.3 millimeters. All right, basically doing the exact same thing. Use the pocket tool, and this is going to only go three millimeters in. Three point. Wait, hold on. 3.89 millimeters in. Make sure I'm reading my notes. Uh, pro tip: uh, read your notes. Okay, again, we go into the face, create a sketch. Sure, or doubt, this is a 14.2, 7.1 radius. Since I couldn't see that very well, I'm going to make sure that is the correct constraint. And it is not, so that's where this constraint tool comes in handy. All right, so now I know that that's correct. That's going to be 14.2 millimeter diameter. Close that out. Again, we're going to hit the pocket tool. And this is going to be. Check my notes again. It's going to be nine point fifty one. So with that, we know we're on the right track uh, because it's completely opened up and we are dimensionally accurate, just like we want. And looking pretty decent. I'm not quite too sure how this is going to print for sure, uh, but we will find out. All right, so for this next part, um, this is actually going to be our opening here. Um, and we're going to need some, some sort of space on this top to allow air in. So we've actually got to cut into this piece. Uh, all right. Now for this last part uh, in building this part, we're actually going to start here at the base. Um, and this is kind of another prototype. We'll see how it goes and see how it works. But um, so we're going to make an exhaust port out here. Um, and we're actually going to use a subtractive prism. Now, this is kind of experimental, so I'm not quite too sure how well this will work. But I'm thinking five sides. Did a few measurements. I go 8.59, and it is going to cut through the entire plane of our object. So it is going to look like that. And we shall see. 
you should see how that works in fact I could probably even cut that even a millimeter or point millimeter higher to allow more airflow in there we're gonna go ahead and use that and I'm doing that because we've got um, this o-ring and we're working with thinner material on this particular prototype so we're going to try to use the actual um, front for the exhaust instead of uh, other prototypes the exhaust was coming out the sides on some on the one that worked anyway so we'll see how that works um, but anyway that is our part it's pretty complex we'll go ahead and export this and we'll see how printer ready this is Oops. Uh, so when we're exporting this, uh, make sure you export this to STL. I wasn't paying attention to what I was exporting it as. Uh, we're going to need X, uh, STL, rather. So real quick, let me get this set up. So you can see what we're doing here. Um, let me close, not that. Close out of this. I'm gonna open this up, and then uh, find our part we just built. There it is, and so. As you can see, it's very small, pretty complicated, and, and so it's going to be pretty difficult to print. That is going to be a very thin surface to print, and we're going to need a support material for the best results. Um, this is by no means... going to be the easiest thing to print for sure. So we'll go ahead and support that. We'll go ahead and slice this and see what we got. So as you can see, or I guess you can't, we'll get up close to there. We're talking with pretty fine detail here. As we go down to the base, you know, like this is a 20 millimeter, was well, 0 0.20 millimeter filament. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty, let's see if we were to change the quality to even smaller. We'll go to 1.15. Millimeter quality. I'll go ahead and slice that. Again, you know, you can only get so dimension accurate with uh, your overhead 3D printers. Now, if you have a resin 3D printer, which I do not, you can get a little higher dimensional accuracy for sure. But with this, that's about as good as we're going to get. Um, we've set this to 0 0.15 millimeters. And we're going to be printing this in generic PETG. But that's about it. Um, yeah, I think that wraps it up. Kind of gives you an idea of the prototyping process in CAD from a very noob uh, beginner perspective um, I'm by no means an OG at this whatsoever I'll be playing around with this and see how it works and how it turns out thanks for tuning in hope this was helpful catch y'all around